Welcome everyone, I am Michael, your host for Antediluvian Revelations. This is the 19th episode of the 4th edition podcast reading of the poetic retelling of the Book of Enoch the Prophet. The complete text of this 4th edition is currently available as a free download in PDF format from polyatloshedpubs.com. Be sure to download your free copy of this revelational guide to the future of mankind. In this episode, the telling of the Great Deluge appears with the story of Noah being the focus there are more details about this event that appear in the text of the paganized Holy Bible that was written and canonized by heretics who blaspheme God with their lies. The truth of circumstances about the Chosen One, the Messiah, and the story of Noah only appear in the text of Enoch's ancient book. There was never a Greek original of this book, but there was a copy composed in Greek. The Book of Enoch was not found in an ancient Egyptian pyramid either by a lying archaeologist who just wants to cheat you out of your money and the Deluvian Revelations is free to the public. The Book of Enoch was the first text of ancient Hebrew literature that predicts the apocalyptic end of mankind and the advent of Jesus Christ. Get ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Get ready for the Apocalypse. In those days Noah saw a sign in the heavens that caused the sky above the earth to change, and the earth itself had become inclined with earthquakes and unusual tremors. He knew that these sights and events were ominous, and that destruction of the earth approached. Noah made a journey to the highest peak he could climb, to the dwellings of his great-grandfather Enoch, who lived in the heavens above the earth. Noah cried out urgently and coarsely with a loud voice. Hear me, hear me. Hear me. He repeated his shout strongly three times. Noah raised his voice again to the heavens. Tell me what is transacting upon earth, where the earth labors and is violently shaken. Surely I shall perish with it. After Noah proclaimed his pleas, there was a great perturbation on earth, and a voice from heaven spoke to him aloud. Hearing this voice suddenly aloud in response to his own, Noah fell down to his face, and his great-grandfather Enoch descended from his place in the heavens and stood before him. Enoch said to Noah, Why hast thou cried out to me with the bitter cry and this lamentation? A commandment has gone forth from the Lord God Almighty against those who dwell on the earth, that they may be destroyed, for they know every secret of the transgressing angels, every oppressive and secret power of those devils, and of those who commit sorcery and make weapons and images from molten metals. They know how silver is produced from the dust of the earth and how to find the veins of metal ore in the earth, for lead and tin are not produced from dust of the earth as the primary source of their production. There is an angel standing upon these layers of metal with the purpose of securely keeping it in the earth, but that angel struggles to prevail in this task. After saying these things, Enoch took Noah with his hands, raised him up, and said to him, Go, for I have asked the Lord of Spirits respecting this perturbation of the earth. The Lord of Spirits replied to me, saying, On account of their impiety, their innumerable judgments have been consummated before me. 
Respecting the moon, they have inquired. They have sought a vision of truth in the night sky. They have known that the earth will perish with those who dwell upon it, and to them there will be no place of refuge forever. They have discovered secrets, and they are those who have been judged. You are not among them, my son. The Lord of Spirits knows that you are pure, good, and free from reproach for having discovered those secrets. He, the Holy One, will establish your name in the midst of the saints and will preserve you from those who dwell upon these secret evils of the earth. He will establish your seed in righteousness with dominion and great glory, and from your seed shall spring forth righteousness and holy men without number forever. After saying this prophecy to Noah, Enoch showed him the angel of punishment. Raquel had made ready the rock and ice, hurtling toward the earth, which was prepared to come and spread open the mighty waters on all of the earth and under its firmament. These waters were for the judgment and destruction of the wicked offspring of those ancient aliens who remained and dwelt upon the earth, and those tribes of men who worshipped them as false gods. The Lord of Spirits commanded the watchers who went forth not to take up men to save them, for those angels presided over all the mighty waters. Afterwards Enoch left the side of Noah, and Noah's spirit was concealed in the heavens. Noah beheld the side of the watchers, the holy sons of God, treading on flaming fire, whose garments and robes were white, and whose faces were covered with transparent crystal. They might have looked like astronauts, modern-day spacefaring beings, hovering above the earth with jet propulsion, although antediluvian in this revelation. Noah saw two rivers of fire that bloomed and glittered below them like the blossoms of a hyacinth, which might have looked like rocket engines thrusting. Then Noah fell on his face before the Lord of Spirits because these sights of advanced technologies were frightening when seen as antediluvian revelations. Michael, one of the archangels, took Noah by his right hand, raised him up, and brought him out to the place of light, where every secret of mercy and righteousness became revealed. He showed Noah all the hidden things in the extremities of heaven, all the receptacles of the stars, and the splendors of the orc cloud, from which planetesimal forms could be sent forth on the command of the angels, and before the faces of the holy. He revealed the truth of how Enoch's spirit was in the heaven of heavens. Noah also saw in the midst of the life that surrounded him the same structure made of crystal blocks that Enoch had seen. It looked like it had been made from stones of ice. In the midst of these blocks there was a vibrating living fire. Noah looked around the circles of endless flames that were rivers of living fire at the habitation's foundation flowing from its extremities which surrounded it 
holding the structure above the surface of the earth and propelling it into the heavens when it ascended. Then the seraphim, the cherubim, and the ophanim surrounded it, those who never sleep but watch the throne of God's glory, because they were the hosts who protect the throne of glory. Noah saw angels innumerable, thousands of thousands, and myriads of myriads who surrounded the mothership. Noah was the second human abducted by alien angels, this being the second written record of an extraterrestrial encounter of the fourth kind. But the watchers returned Noah to the earth, where he lived his life for nearly 1,000 years before his spirit ascended to heaven when his corporeal body ceased to function. Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, Fanwell, and the holy angels who were in the heavens above went in and out of that mothership. With them was the Ancient of Days, whose head was white as wool. All about him was purity, and his robe was indescribable. Then Noah fell upon his face while his flesh was dissolved, and his spirit became transfigured to be eternal, the same as it had been for his great-grandfather Enoch. Noah cried out with a loud voice, with a powerful spirit blessing, glorifying and exalting the Lord God Almighty, the Only One, the Holy Spirit. Those blessings which proceeded from Noah's mouth became acceptable in the presence of the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days came to the earth with Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Fanwell. They were accompanied by thousands and thousands and myriads and myriads of their hosts of angels, which could not be numbered. All of the earth will shudder in great fear at the sight of this extraterrestrial event in the heavens. Then the angel of peace went to Noah and spoke to him, saying, You are the offspring of man who was born for righteousness, and righteousness is within you. The righteousness of the Ancient of Days shall not forsake you. In relation to Noah and all of his family, the angel of peace said, On thee in his name shall he confer peace in the existing world, for from the time the world was created peace was offered to you. Thus shall it happen to you forever and ever, that all who shall exist and walk in the path of righteousness the Lord will not forsake forever. With you shall there be light everlasting and the days of your offspring will increase with longevity. Peace shall be to the righteous whose path will be integrity in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. Noah had received the gift of everlasting life, but he would live on earth only until his body died. Afterwards, his spirit ascended into the heavens. In those days the words of God came to Noah, and the Lord said to him, Noah, 
Behold, your lot has ascended up to me, a lot void of crime, a lot of beloved and upright. Now then shall the Nephilim labor at the trees, but when they proceed to take them all, I will put my hand upon them and preserve them. The seed of life shall arise from these trees, and a change shall take place with them, that the barren land may not remain barren. I will establish your seed before me forever and ever, and the seed of those who dwell with you on the surface of the earth, not going into the earth. It shall be blessed and multiplied in the presence of the earth, in the name of the Lord. God also told Noah that he will confine those fallen angels and those among them who disclosed impiety, and in that burning valley is where they shall be bound, the lowest place on earth, which God showed to Enoch in the west, where there were mountains of gold, silver, iron, gallium, and tin. Noah saw that accursed valley, in which there was a great perturbation, and where the waters were troubled. When all this was effected, from the liquefaction of metal by fire, such that there were pyroclastic flows and earthquakes, which occurred continuously in that place, there arose a strong smell of sulfur, which mixed with the waters, making it acidic. It is like the Valley of Hinnom, where all of those guilty of seduction were burned like heaps of trash beneath the barren soil. Throughout all of that accursed valley, there were also rivers of fire and molten earth flowing, so that into this lava those errant alien angels shall be condemned for having seduced and altered the natural evolution of all mankind and the inhabitants of the earth. Well, this concludes episode 19 of Antediluvian Revelations, a poetic retelling of the book of Enoch the prophet. This episode presented subsegments 1 through 6 of part 2, Canto 5, from the 4th edition. All of the music collections used in these podcasts come from YouTube's content creator resources, and all tracks are copyright free for content creators who publish their works on YouTube. This audio podcast series is available for free on all of your favorite audio platforms or on YouTube in the Body at Lotion Publishing. YouTube channel. The introduction of Noah's story into Enoch's book might have been won by one of Enoch's descendants and not necessarily by Enoch himself. The truth about Enoch's book is that the text has been preserved by his descendants for several thousand years and it has been written in many different languages. The matter of this truth will become more evident in the latter parts of the text when Enoch presents his dream visions and epistles. The story of Noah will continue in the next episode and it will be a real surprise to many listeners and readers to know that Noah was the very first human to have been born albino. He was also the second man to receive everlasting life in the history of mankind. Be sure to subscribe for notifications of the next release. Thank you for listening. I am Michael.